no uh, Paddington 2, which no. we were talking <laughs> about the other day. Best. What a film. Oh, that that is have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh my God, Joe. It's so good. It is the best. Have I think Paddington 1? No, I don't know. Oh. see Paddington 1. Paddington no, they're both two. great, but Paddington 2 is better. Welcome to the Sheerlux Team Podcast with me, Charlotte Collins. This week, I'm joined by Sherry Andrew, Emma Bigger, and a very special guest. Joe Goods with us today. I'm so over excited. Hello, girls. You know I'm very, <laughs> very over excited. Oh, no. Can I say, it's so lovely because actually, I've been lucky enough to be on your show many times over the years. So quite nice to have you in my hot seat. We as drag to the other you way around. on. Charlotte, oh, no, we drag you, you on. Everyone says, get Charlotte on. She knows what she's talking oh, about. I love coming on. I love it. <laughs> oh, gosh, in the BBC, talking about fashion, it's so it's freedom, you know? Mm. Because often we feel guilty in that newsroom showing off what we're wearing or what we want to wear. And then you arrive and everyone goes, oh my God, look what she's wearing, look what she's wearing. <laughs> oh, so no, we love it. That's very sweet. I enjoy it a lot. But yes, I'm excited to grill you back today. <laughs> um, can we talk first of all about your amazing bag? Are you happy to talk about your bag? Oh, yes. Because Joe's come in with like the most, oh, this is so good. It's um, it's a Bottega bag and it's in faux fur and it's like carrying a little teddy bear around with you. Can we hold it up? Because we do film yes, it. So, for, it so for those who are listening, I'm afraid you'll have to use your imagination. But for those watching, I mean, it's, it's like a, amazing. Oh, it's it's the mega. fur version. I've got the normal version. Have you? Yeah, but that's... I just, I mean, I was saying to Charlotte though, I just, next door, there's a lovely coffee place next door and I went in the loo and I thought I'll just put that and then I thought, no, I won't put it there because it's so impractical, it just picks up dirt Mm. and then part of me thinks, can I throw that in the washing machine? No, (laughs) absolutely not. It's got a full leather inside. Yeah, full leather inside and I love this with the little pouch, uh, sorry, perfume, (laughs) Um, little, yeah, pouch that... uh, you know, is chained to it. It's and so good. It is so, so fluffy. Good. And it's quite boxy, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah. I just love that it's yellow as well. Yes. Oh, it's such a nice colour. It, it is, is nice yellow. Color. It's not even beige. It's yellow. It is yellow. Mm. A lot of people think when they're investing in something like an expensive handbag that it should be a classic mm. colour, in inverted commas. So... But you went for something really fun. Yes, I don't have. If you notice, I very well seldom ever wear anything classical. Mm. I, I'm I'm quite um, an extrovert and performer and show off, and <laughs> consequently, I wear quite showy off clothes. Damn it! I never realised that's why I did it. Damn it! <laughs> yes, it all makes it's sense. True. Oh my god, it all makes sense. Now. True. Okay. Mm. It's it's part of the whole theatricality mm. of your life, ah. and. Um, and so, yes, that is, it's like, it's a status piece, isn't it? It's a novelty piece and it makes people think. And I, I, I would love to be a Celine type woman, you know, and just the classics, but it just bypassed me. I, I, I'm i just a natural You're show You're attracted off. to totally, those things. Totally, yeah. totally. I feel like you like a fun... I'm I trying do. to give you your, your well, bags. Your... When I'm doing something like a bag investment, I don't take that many risks because mm. it's, you know, it can be a lot of money. I mean, it is... A talking point, and it can be just a whole outfit. If you go out mm. in jeans with a t-shirt, that is literally the so outfit. True. Um, but I, you know, I'm at the same time. I'm not really a handbag person. We were talking earlier on about being short, and um, handbags and coats. I hate because I feel shorter mm-hmm. when I'm carrying them around. I like the freedom of being quite a straight silhouette. Does that make sense? So I don't like clutter mm-hmm. really. So I don't have a big choice of bags. That's about it. So sorry, it's the size of the bag. The pe- size of the bag. Yeah. And I'd be much happier never taking a bag out, really. Mm. I just like my car keys and a travel card. Oh. We've got a colleague, B, sometimes walks in with, with, no, with, bag. with no handbag. Yeah. I'm just so <laughs> envious. Oh my God, is that not the truth? It's also like she just kind of woke up and decided to go to the yeah. office. It yeah. gives that yeah. vibe. I love it. It's so like unpremeditated. Yeah. I love the relaxedness of it all. Absolutely. Minimalist to the end. Yeah, it's so cool. Keys and that's uh, it. I mean, I'm like, have I got my notebook, my, oh, my jo- you know, everything, Kitchen checking sink. everything, mm-hmm, my wallet, mm-hmm. this bank card, that bank card. Me too. And she just yeah. she, scrolls literally, it. Literally, a phone. She holds her phone. It's, it's so amazing. impressive. But does she wear makeup? Yeah, she does. She must have a lip yeah. gloss. Yeah, she does wear makeup. She's, she's, do you know what? She wears, we were talking about, she is, we were she's talking about pockets. baggy clothes before and we, we're, we're a baggy clothes crew. B yeah. takes baggy clothes yeah. to a whole new level. So she must have lots of pockets. She probably true. has everything secreted all over. She must have pockets, it's so true. She's probably got like, you know, whip open a thing and she's got yeah. all strapped yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Sherry, you're a big handbag carrier. Um, yes, I feel really weird if I don't have anything. Mm. Like, what, what do you do with your, your hands and your arms? I'm like, I don't know how to position mm. myself. Mm. Um, but it's got to be like a crossbody, mm. something that I don't actually have to carry in my hand. Yeah. I think that's the key. Yeah, there's nothing worse than something that you just sort of have to, they're like, 
takes up hands and energy. I, do you know my bet noir are rucksacks? Sorry, girls, if you've got rucksacks. No, I don't. Oh my god, on the tube when someone turns and they always knock you over, or they put it oh, back on their shoulder, so they go to and they like there's a swing motion yes. that they do with it, and so they just whack you in the face while they're swinging you onto their shoulder. And we're so short, so four we're of so us, short. it goes straight yeah. right. Terry, right. right. we're dragging you down with us. You're not Sorry. quite as short as the rest of us. You're I'm, a giant. I'm on the cusp. I'm on the cusp. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what everyone got up to this weekend. Emma, what did you do? It was Mother's Day. It was Mother's Day. Friday, I went to a neighbourhood restaurant in Crouch End, which was a really gorgeous little French bistro place. Cool, which was lovely. It's going to be a terrible friend. Accent, <laughs> Le Deux Garçon. And yeah, it's just like really buzzy, nice atmosphere, like great food, like really easy, but like just lovely vibe. Nice. Uh, Sasso went to my first wedding of the, of the year. Oh, yeah, which felt quite nice. early. Yeah, that is early. Nice but um, yeah, the weather wasn't great, mm. rained all morning, but then it cleared up. Nice. So then when they went out and did their photos, it was like really nice and the sun came out. In London? Stuff. In London, in Hackney. Nice. And what did you wear? Uh, I wore a really old uh, sleeper set that I've only worn once. And I thought sleeper. it's kind of a good time of year to mm. wear that kind of thing. Mm. So, and it's a bit wedding-y yeah. and it was easy. It's a bit cold for dresses. So for, like, for an evening dresses, dress. Yeah. yeah. And it's comfy as yeah. well. So you just, yeah. So uh, I wore that. And then Sunday I had a lovely lunch with my boys for Mother's Aww. Day. Nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Well, Hackney wedding, that's cool. That, that is cool. very cool. Yeah, that's it was full of very cool people as well. What was, where in Hackney was it? Um, It was at like an event, like a studio event space that you hire out. That does for, sound cool. yeah, and, yeah, and they'd done like amazing like floral arrangements and... Cool. Yeah, it was very cool. Cool bride, good dress. Very cool bride. She mm-hmm. had two two dresses. She had one made, and then she had you know that um, amazing polka dot one that um, Zena wore. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Um, the colourful. Yes, I can't remember who who it was. The by. wonderful heart Zena on Instagram. Yes. wore a very. Do you know who she is, Joe? She wore. No. An, I'm going to show you the photo. Yeah, you've got to show the photo. She wore. She well, she had five different bridal looks, Zena, because they it was spread across pandemic lockdowns. Yeah, yeah. And she wore this amazing um oh, let's find her. As the bride. As, as the, bride. the bride. And it's a it's sort of sort of white it's a white kind of very um taffeta tool type dress. Ooh, this one. Covered. Oh, it's incredible, isn't oh, yeah, it? Amazing. That's stunning. Yeah, Covered nice. in the most incredible uh oh multicolored polka dots. I mean, if you tried to describe that, it would sound so fussy, but it's yeah. It's just amazing, mm. isn't it? It's just class. So that was her second yeah. dress. Love yeah. that. Love so, Wow. Very so, yeah, cool. Yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah really, really fun. fun. Yeah. Did your boys get you anything for Mother's Day? Uh, I got a gorgeous bunch of flowers and a bottle of perfume. Oh, oh that's nice. Nice. Yeah, Ideal. and a lovely lunch. Oh, so yeah, Nailed I think is, I yeah. did pretty well, actually. Good. Yeah. For them. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Sherry, what did you get up to? So on Saturday, I had like a date day with my friends. We went to the pub to meet my best friend's new puppy, oh. who is so sweet. She's like a month old. She's a little oh. cavapoo. Oh, and she's like a gingery colour. Oh, Honestly, so sweet. Um, what have they called her? They've called her Penelope. Oh, oh that's sweet. Nelly for sure. I know she's really sweet. That's really sweet. I think named after Penelope Pitstop. Oh. I was like, oh, that's, a, that's <laughs> a rogue choice, but I like it. I like it. <laughs> my, my dad calls me Penelope. Penelope's pit stop because I drive a bit like that. <laughs> Fast enough. <laughs> <stop. laughs> yeah. Um, and then in the evening, I went to my friend's house party for his birthday. It was quite a, like a lots of little sociable, sociable ones. Um, and then yesterday we had like a Mother's Day dinner at home with my mum, which was so nice. We nice. had like a roast lamb nice. Sunday roast. And then quite rogue, but we went out last night. We went to a gig, uh, me and my boyfriend, in the Camden Roundhouse, which oh. is probably my favourite venue at the moment. It's just so cool. They, I feel like they've really got it down to a team. Mm. We saw um, Joseph, who's like an amazing, amazing singer, and his energy is so lovely. Mm. So it was a, a couple of us went yesterday, and it was so fun. So, wow. so Joe mm. Sherry is amazing at live music gigs. That's like her thing. <laughs> and so if you, you know, you're the girl for recommendations. For and the gigs. roundhouse. The I mean, I'm an old hippie, so I mm-hmm. remember the roundhouse. You know, when it first opened, mm-hmm. and um, I saw these old hippie bands there. So like, the, if the walls could speak, mm. you know, the years and years of history. Mm-hmm. That have gone in that place. It's seen a lot. <laughs> when we used to go, you used to wade around. All the beer was on the floor, so you'd be like walking through streams of beer. <laughs> Love you know? it. That hasn't changed. <laughs> still, still the same. same. Still the same. Still yeah. sticky floors. Yeah, but it's a really nice venue. Very yeah, cool. lovely venue. What else have yeah. you got coming up, gig wise? Gig wise, oh, I feel like I want to do some day festivals this year. Mm-hmm. Kelly Rowland is headlining Mighty Hoopla, so that's like number one. Mm-hmm. 
what else? We're going to Barcelona to see Bicep, wow. who's like my boyfriend's favourite. They're like a techno Irish duo. Cool. Georgie really rates them a lot. Georgie, Georgie likes the techno bicep. music. Mm. She? Yeah. She does. So oh, yeah. abandoned. Her yeah. taste. Yeah. I know, yeah. wild. Last time I was here, she was listening to classical music. <laughs> yeah, she loves I- Ionardi, is that his name? Ionardi, the piano player. Oh, yes. the classical yes. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So funny. Oh, yes, eclectic. Fun. I'm seeing Elton John in two weeks. Oh, oh my God. But, uh, well, at the O2, this is this is a concert that I think was supposed to be mm-hmm. in like September 2020, mm-hmm. or maybe it was early 21. Can't remember. Anyway, it's been moved and moved and moved. I have heard that he sort of gets wheeled out of it now when he kind of does his thing oh. and then gets wheeled back. I'm a bit nervous. Of, um, backing singers. I think there'll be quite a lot of. Mm. Smoke like, and mirrors. Distractions. <laughs> you're in, distractions. You're in the exactly. presence of Elton John. I know. And, but can I tell you, I saw him in Vegas maybe like 15 years ago. It was his Red Piano tour or Red Piano show in Vegas. And it was um, at, at Caesar's Palace and it was a really intimate gig and it was so amazing. And so you know when you've just got such a like lovely preserved memory mm. of oh, someone. You don't want to ruin I'm it. Always, I'm yeah. always a bit. Do you know scared. I don't think he'd allow himself. I don't think he'd let himself down. No, I hope you're Do you right. know I think he's probably put so much plan B in yeah. that there'll be cor- there'll be choirs. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. There'll, there'll be, be clip tapes. Yeah. There'll be so much production mm. that it'll be amazing. I hope you're right. I hope you're oh, right. Oh gosh, you lucky um, thing. Interestingly, today on Selfridges they have launched a an Elton John shop. It's really cool. It's in store and it's online. And they've basically I don't know if this is because this tour is coming up, but they've had loads of key designers create versions of their existing products but like Elton John themed so they've Ooh. got Derek Rose has done some Elton John pajamas and That's Letitia so Rude fun. has done some plates with um, Elton John quotes on it it's really fun it's worth I a I think lot. it must Clever. be because Nina Bing she's done those sweatshirts yeah I really the, want this yeah. a t-shirt it's really cool yeah, yeah and Nina Bing has done it's it's like a 70s it's like Saturday night mm-hmm. um, oh. version like image of him yeah it's so cool it's really cool Jay what did you get up to this so weekend? I went to see my mum who's 98 wow. would you believe and she was 98 on Friday oh. and um, she has and I'm not trying to bring the mood down because it's it's she's got the beginnings of dementia but to the point that she knows she's got the beginning of dementia and at the moment it's quite lovely mm. in that she's confused but it's fine do you know what I mean and um and I have to tell you this because she and I we have um I have a YouTube channel and she's often on it with me no. and, and, yeah, <laughs> and I drive with her by the side of me my dog in the middle and um we went out for our ride and um she sits by the side of me in my dog's head, probably totally illegal, everybody, but anyway, <laughs> on the back seat. And um, she, you know, I took her to the farm shop where she loves to go and we always buy the same things and we bring them home. And she just kept staring at me as I was driving along. And I went, are you right, Mutz? I call her Mutty. And she went, fame. And I went, sorry? And she went, <laughs> fame, that's all you think about is fame. <laughs> and I, I laughed because she worships me and Aww. me her. And I went, sorry? And then I laughed and I went, do you know you're absolutely right? <laughs> and, we, and we were just laughing. And she was, and I just thought, this is the bit of her mind that is, well, it's a 98-year-old, mm. do you know what I mean? And um, and I got back and I said to my brother, I told my brother, and he went, that's so astute of her. Because it, it has been what's driven me, you know? And she's it's taken her to 98 to actually say it to me. Um but yeah, we went out, bought stuff from the farm shop. I know. <laughs> so like, I a, like a quick, deep emotional crisis and then onto the farm oh, shop. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like, I know her so well and she me that mm. you just forgive each other, mm. you know, mothers and daughters, mm. basically. Um, uh, then I cooked lunch, then drove back to London and did my radio show, which I do, which was so frustrating because, oh, uh, bless the BBC. Um, they... <laughs> Charlotte's heard me rant about the BBC enough. You can keep all this in. I don't care. Um, But I, on a Sunday, for some weird reason, because football is a religion, I share my wavelength with a football match. So um, we were talking about feet with Margaret Dabbs. And um, usually the phone in, it's like when you come on, goes crazy. People want to know this, that. And I kept thinking, I'm not getting any calls. I'm not getting any calls. And then the producer goes, no, well, we're sharing the wavelength with Crystal Palace playing Brighton. Oh, is it Arsenal? Oh, you see, you... Sorry, yeah, you're she's a, got two signs. Got oh, there two you go. Signs. And I went, what? And she went, yes, yeah, sorry. And so, um, well, so people were trying to tune into your show. Yeah. and said they were getting the football. Yeah, they're getting the football. Your sons were probably oh. loving it. My listeners who wanted to talk about their feet were thoroughly frustrated. Um, but that was my radio show. How yesterday. silly! I know. Surely, also, why bother? You know, 
paying you if they're I just know, gonna exactly. s- stream over your show. But I think I mean you're obviously into football. I mean, I I'm not into football. But it is a religion, isn't it? And it rules over everything. Yeah, and I think they just think, well, we've got to put it out there, especially yeah. if it's a London team. But can't they just like I don't really know how frequencies work, but you think they could just like have another one? Yeah, they just create another one. Or listen later on or something. But no. So that was that was a bit frustrating. That is frustrating. But was Margaret Jabs for those who don't know, Margaret Jabs um does medical pedicures and you know, she's got a series of salons across I think just in London. no, they're good. God, so, no, what I love, she's another short woman, everybody, um, <laughs> and she wears these massive heels. She won't mind me saying this because she's always saying, you know, flat shoes are better. And I go, yeah, but look at what you've got on your feet, Margaret. <laughs> and she says, and this is really interesting, you should change your shoes at least three times a day. Ooh. Oh, mm. because it takes 48 hours for any shoe to dry out. I mean, that's a ghastly thought, isn't it? But everything we're wearing, if we take them off tonight, won't be dry for 48 hours. But dry from sweat? Yes. Oh. Sorry, girl. Sweaty feet, no, <laughs> Charlotte, <laughs> I beg to differ. You will. <laughs> everyone else well, even when you've got good socks. socks. Yeah. Yes, even if you've got good socks. I don't, I mean, we don't come from a sweaty family, but yeah. she said everyone's <laughs> feet, they're enclosed for a certain amount of time. You need to air them for 48 hours. Mm. Also, oh, changing to know. your shoes, boy, that's an effort, isn't it? That's but amazing. also to change your gait so that you don't become yeah, lazy. That, I thought you were going to say yeah. that. Yes, yeah, that as well. Yeah. Has anyone watched anything good, listened to anything good, got anything you going on, Sherry? Oh, at the weekend, I watched Empire of Light, which came out, I think, a couple of months ago, but it's now on Disney Plus if you want to watch it at home. And it's with Olivia Coleman. Um, and it's set in, I think, like the, I want to say the 80s, early 90s. You're not quite sure. And she falls in love with this young black guy who comes to work at the cinema that she works at. And I think it's set in Margate in Kent. And it's a story about how they are basically their relationship and how that blossoms and the ups and downs of it. And then in the background of the storyline, she's suffering with some mental health issues. So you see how that plays out. I love like, anywhere set in Margot. I think yeah. Margot yeah. is like, so pretty. It, isn't it? The and clips I've seen really about, cool. she's walking, they're walking through fairgrounds together and it's all very exactly. kind of aesthetic. Yeah, it's very mm. aesthetic. So it's Olivia Coleman and Michael Ward. And yes, there's an age difference. She's in her mid fifties and he's actually a student. Wow. Um, about to go off to university. So that's another dynamic. How of the relationship. Yeah. I mean, Olivia Coleman's amazing in everything. Is she mm-hmm. equally good in this? Equal, honestly, mm. what can't she do? Yeah. I think she's one of those women who can honestly just play any mm. any person from any era. Yeah, yeah she's amazing. Quite, it's quite an emotional film. Okay. But just a really lovely one. Like, it, like oh. it's, it's not too depressing. No, 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 not okay. at all. And what's yeah. it on? Uh, Disney. Uh-huh. Disney Plus. Plus. Yeah. Um, slight tangent, but in my head, I was just thinking Olivia Coleman. The Crown. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have seen over the weekend, and I think it was yesterday, um, they released photos of a, I think it was a kind of a, a behind the scenes photo which has leaked from um, L Street Studios. And it is a photo of a mangled car yeah. replicating the car that Diana mm-hmm. died in. There's also, they've um, seen the Ritz has been recreated at L Street Studios as well, oh, yeah. which is where she was staying yeah. and the night that she died. And I mean, I've made my, my thoughts on The Crown um, more than clear on this podcast before, which is mm. I think is despicable. These people are real people. Mm. And I just can't believe that they're yeah. doing this. That it's unreal. Is, I mean, yeah. I, I agree, but that is a step too far. A That's step too far. Like, mm. I, I mean, think... some of it I think is for entertainment. And yes, it's real people, but... You know, I just I think that's just despicable. Yeah, yeah. I I I mean, especially with the whole Harry Meghan thing that's going on, it's feeding their fury basically. Yeah. Because I mean, I loved the original series of The Crown because it was historical. Exactly. Yeah, it was. You know, it was what I'd learned about at school, and I just thought this is really interesting. I didn't know a lot about Churchill's role in the monarchy mm. and everything else. And the fog was interesting. And the fog, yeah, that was I really know. <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. We loved Who the knew? piece. Mm. Who knew it came up through the plug holes? Yeah, that's um, it. you're absolutely right. But there are people alive. Whatever you think about Harry and Meghan and how they feel about the press and the mm. media they've just that's just isn't it fueling the flame, yeah. flame. It's mm. exactly that like I don't agree with everything that Harry has done and has to say no, no, but but, it's, but, it's, but like it's that he's got a damn right near. point about Absolutely. this yeah, too yeah. Near. yeah. far too near oh. Netflix boo disgrace mm. um Emma have you watched anything good uh, do you know, I haven't really watched a lot. I started watching The Whale. Oh, yeah. But I only got Ooh. halfway through, so I can't really... Because it was really depressing and boring? Well, I did find myself kind of, you know, picking up my phone and 
and I'd heard I had had heard good things about it, so I thought, oh, I'm going to get into this. But I was a bit like, mm. Mm. so it was one of those where I mean, and it is a depressing movie, mm. and it's quite hard to watch. I find it quite um, gross a bit jar like a bit yeah. jarring so for those who don't know this is this is the film that brendan fraser won the oscar for last mm. week but like what he's is it? amazing and what is it about so it's about a really obese overweight man who's kind of a recluse in his house he can't really move he needs help to go to the lit like he needs help with everything and it's about his um he left his wife and his child when she was eight uh and ran off with a man and it's about him trying to find kind of mend their relationship from what i've heard it is it's like watching a play and that you're just watching one room yeah and it's, it's one room yeah so i think that's it it never moves beyond which is quite trying it's depressing. Depressing. oh my gosh yes oh. isn't it yeah. yeah well often as i was again i've said many times over the years there is no such thing as good art that is happy think about that oh my mm. god that's deep. deep isn't it <laughs> but like oh i don't god. think i'm so happy to be challenged on it but in terms of like good books good films you know ones that are really are good. all tortured they're all, all tortured. tortured you're mm. right to oh, some element that yeah that and the ones that you remember certainly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's probably true yeah yeah i don't know why the help is like the only like book with a happy ending oh, gosh, we can do a whole good. radio show on that charlotte mm. thank you that's welcome. my show tonight <laughs> you might come away with loads of yeah I mean, honestly i'd love please do that and then no, no, i'm going let to let me know if anyone comes up with a it's good a brilliant suggestion brilliant quote sound of music actually it has to get sad, but then it gets happy. Well, it's I was going to say, because it does, but if you think they're escaping the Nazis, <laughs> yeah, so films, yeah. it is tragic. It sort of has to get quite deep yeah. and dark yeah. to be good. Yeah. Because that's where substance is. You're absolutely yeah. right. <gasps> wow. Oh, God, that's my show I'm tonight. Very Thank deep. you. <laughs> um, okay, fine. So not really one. Uh, if you're, if you're... I will probably watch the okay. other half, but I don't know. Okay. It's not a particular, it's not a feel good yeah. Yeah. movie. No, but. No, uh, Paddington 2, which we no. were crazy about the other day. <laughs> what a film. Oh, what, have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, my God, Joe. It's so good. good. It is the best. Have I seen Paddington 1? No, no, you've seen Paddington 1. Paddington no, they're both 2. great, but Paddington 2 is better. Hugh Grant's the baddie. I love Hugh Grant. He's he's so good. Good. See, I love yeah. what he did on the red carpet. I just think oh my god, me too. I just thought, you know, what a ridiculous question to yeah. ask. It's so <laughs> funny because a lot of people are saying this. Obviously, yes. in America, there was this big backlash. Yeah. This, yeah. this is the interview. But they don't do irony, do they? Well, America? quite. So this is the interview um, on on the red carpet for the Oscars. Ashley Graham um, was presenting and asked him some questions, and he gave some <laughs> very <laughs> curt answers. But yes, I've had quite a few people yeah. say, "Well, he's just being Hugh Grant, and he's yeah. just being exactly. British." Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Crazy question she asked, but well. Yeah. I mean, it's it's quite normal on a red carpet to on ask a red where carpet. your suit's from. Yeah. No, but to ask what it was like playing the character. I mean, it's, you know, he, he had to give a short generic. answer. You just mm. quite generic. Yeah. 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 What are you going to say to that? It <laughs> exactly. was great. Exactly. It was great. Um, Joe, are you watching anything? Do you what, watch much TV? Um, do you know, you've watched, you've talked about The White Lotus and I know you're not a fan <laughs> and I absolutely loved it, it but good. I came to it late. Mm. I also think I'm growing into Jennifer Coolidge, you know, the old... I think target. we all want to be a bit more Jennifer <laughs> Coolidge. I mean, it's yeah, just great. amazing. <laughs> what I want to watch, and because I've spent so much time reading about it and hearing him being interviewed over the weekend, is Spencer Matthews' yes. documentary. Oh, I've mm. seen that. Yeah. Um, f- have you seen mm. it? Oh, wow. It's very good. Is it? Yeah. Um, Finding Michael, is mm. it looking... And, and I read The Guardian review they said it's actually really emotional as well oh, yeah mm. it's definitely yeah it's very emotional have you talked about it before yeah laura talked about it last week having seen it but mm. yeah i have i would like to see it too yeah yeah really and well. also because i am such a huge fan of his i um and i heard him being interviewed um yesterday when um somebody asked him about made in chelsea and he said i just really want to forget it and she quite rightly mm. said but you wouldn't even you mm. wouldn't have made any of the, you wouldn't be with vogue you wouldn't mm. you know and he, him a absolutely yeah. and he said yes i know that he said but when i look back on the episodes I just feel so foolish mm. well we all feel foolish mm. when you look back on your life yes. but I what a wonderful thing <laughs> what, a, what a cheery <laughs> <I> thought <laughs> it's great Don't Don't but what a, what a wonderful thing you know that they because apparently it cost a fortune to make it and um and they made it because it was him you kind of like are on the edge of your seat mm. like what you know is it because it's based on a photo that they received of a a climber dead in a similar um, outfit that he'd worn on that day so they knew that the colors all matched and the boots were the same and the whatever mm. and then it's like kind of going along that route I, th- I do think it's a spoiler to say that we know they didn't find him no so that's, no i think, I think that's, I think that's yeah. out that's there out i think there. yeah um but, but they yeah. do, is it right they show videos that spencer hadn't seen before of him is yes. that oh, wow. yeah that's that's Imagine that. yeah that's yeah but then they they 
well this might be a spoiler but then they help someone else right okay, on the cool. on on the expedition oh, wow. so it's kind of got a happy-ish oh wow that gave me goose twins yeah, yeah that's oh, cool yeah. Okay, we must all watch that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah we'll definitely that. the list. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, Sherry, you brought along some things to chat about. So there was a piece in the Saturday Times at the weekend, and the headline is How to Beat the Sunday Night Blues. Don't like Mondays, avoid your work emails, and enjoy the weekend. So I think everyone gets Sunday night blues to a certain extent. I feel like I get them quite badly these days. Not because I don't want to come to work yeah. on a Monday, <laughs> just because I'm like, oh, the weekend's over. Mm. It means you're enjoying a weekend, I think. True. So they have said 80% of us experience some kind of Sunday night dread, but professors at the University of Exeter have said that there are strategies to tackle. There's a word for it. Yeah, I it, couldn't pronounce that word. This is a long it. word. Go on. It's... Um, Lunar adiosophobia. Oh my gosh. Stunning. Something to do with the moon. About yeah. Indeed. Could right. be. The name given to an extreme fear or, or dread of a Monday morning. Hmm. So to tackle them, you need Lu- to... Lundy. Lundy, Lundy yeah. yeah. Lundy, there you, go. you need to complete your to-do list on a Friday afternoon, avoid emails over the weekend, and plan fun activities for Monday mornings. Yeah. Which I think makes sense. I think that's all lovely. Yeah, it, isn't it weird though? Because do you think it started from school? I, you know, mm. I'm a lot older than you, and I still have that Sunday evening homework has to be done. Yeah, songs of praise was the only well, thing that was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, what was the <laughs> other thing where they used to they used oh. to do the review? What people have thought about TV that week? Oh, I know what you mean. It was like oh, a week in like review. The, it was, um, oh, what was it called? With Esther Ransom. Oh, yes. Gosh, yes. What was yes. What is you're right. That mean? followed songs um, of praise. That was the light entertainment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was like the jolly Sunday. Night night. It was just you know ah, oh, and it hangs with you for the rest of your life. It's like the dentist waiting room, isn't it? I went to my gym at six o'clock this morning. Morning, wow. which I would never Amazing. ever do because I do a late night radio show but it was like oh my god there was no one there it was all it was the cleanest I've ever seen mm. it and I thought there's no hair anywhere in the change I mean I go to a really nice gym but you know you always think god there's people being in these lockers and gone so it's immaculate and I just thought this is how you do it Monday morning get down to the gym literally before anybody else mm. and it's like embryotic is it you know like a Rebirth. Born again. It's born again. Um, <laughs> See, I, I don't think that would do it for me because I hate I would look forward to that. <laughs> that's not, yeah. that's not my version <laughs> not your of a fun Monday. But Emma, you also, you get up and work out, don't you? Does well, that help you? Sometimes. I mean, <laughs> sometimes. I used to mm. like do it a lot, but recently I've been really bad. Well, you're busy. You've got a very yeah. busy job. What about Sunday night, please? So, Joe, you combated it this morning with well, a workout. Well, it's just so weird. I didn't even know we were going to talk about that, but I just, I thought, gosh, this is the cleanest this gym's ever been. Mm. I could, Monday's the one day I can get up early because I haven't done a late night show. And I just, I feel like I'm firing on all cylinders. Mm. I thought that's, rather than sloth, you know, going into a Monday, mm. um, you know, I just, <laughs> I, um, I just, but can I just ask you girls, because, you know, I don't work in an office, and so I have to go into the, my studio every day. If you're working from home, does the work week still have the same pattern then? Is it still a Monday to Friday? With the, Because where I live, I live in Marylebone on the high street, and Thursday night is the new Friday night. Everybody mm. is out. Mm. And I just thought, maybe it's a shorter week, which means on a Monday morning, do you feel less depressed? I definitely think that working from home, so we work from home on a Wednesday and a Friday, definitely takes the impact out of that oh my God, where am I going to find the energy for to five days in the office? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And you don't have to like do your hair and makeup. No. Yeah. A few days break. So yeah. A few Makes days a massive working difference. Working with a face pack on it. Yeah, yeah heaven. Absolutely <laughs> heaven. Sherry, so have you come up with any ways to combat those Sunday night blues for yourself? Mm. So I spoke to my sister about this because she is like a big Monday person. I'm like, how do you do this? And she was like, you need to reframe your mind. Think of like Monday as like a really exciting day. Even if you haven't got anything on, like have a nice lunch or like go for a walk with a friend at work on a Monday afternoon, do something that you wouldn't do another day, but mm. that you really enjoy. So I've kind of trying to be doing that, but I think my thing is to like do something on a Sunday evening. Yeah. Not mm. necessarily go out every week, but stay at home, have like a nice date night in. I don't know, just make it feel a little bit, a little bit longer. Yes. Um, and that kind of has been working. Yes. So. Less like a school day. Because we're exactly. still school day orientated. Well, can I say, so mm. I don't, I actually don't get something like blues. I think I used to when I was younger, but I but I don't as I have got older. And I think mm. it's it's basically exactly what you just said. In my head, Sunday nights were like 
everything we talked about songs of praise and homework and blah blah <laughs> and actually i still am living in a kind of novelty space of oh isn't it fun that we can like cook together and watch a film on a sunday it can be kind yeah. of however you want it to be mm-hmm. and so i don't find i also don't find the idea of monday kind of inherently depressing because also monday blink and it's over yeah and that's true i don't know i just I, like sun, i'm like oh my god i don't have to have a really yeah. boring sunday night and that really helps me i think yeah, mm, yeah. you're a grown-up i'm yeah. a grown-up yeah. i do what i like <laughs> exactly emma do you suffer I definitely kind of Sunday afternoon my brain will definitely go into a different place so I'll start thinking about work and the week ahead yeah. and the kids and what they've got on mm-hmm. and what I have to do and what form I have to fill you know all those things so I definitely do have a switch of gear probably at about four o'clock on a Sunday yeah mm-hmm. that even if you're doing something on a Sunday night you can't really yeah. shake yeah. yeah I mean I'll still do nice things like watch a movie and sure. have nice food but I'll definitely it'll definitely be at the back of my head yeah mm. and, are you, and are you saying homework boys is this time yeah, to do yeah. Oh, god yeah, you see yeah. it goes on and on I was gonna it? say <laughs> unfortunately if you've got children you sort of go back into that cycle of Sunday yeah night yeah, yeah. School, yeah don't you and I have you done your time's table oh, <laughs> god. Oh, like, oh the fun um okay any other tips in that feature Sherry deep breathing I think this is quite extreme if you're getting yeah you maybe might... if you get anxious maybe that's yeah. quite yeah. helpful to dampen your flight or fight response mm. and they also say taking active long walks engaging with fr- friends and family and checking in on loved ones who may be unwell or lonely mm. because they might be having it too. That's true. Mm. And I also think when the when the clocks go forward, yes. that will make a massive Huge difference. difference. Mm. So true. Mm. One more That's week. part of it. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Today is actually the first official day of spring. Oh, oh can't be spring. <laughs> yeah. um, so it does only get longer from here on out. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Amazing. Um, okay, and Sherry, the second topic? So the second topic is our lady, Gwyneth Paltrow. She's in hot water yet again. <laughs> Um, she did a podcast a couple of weeks ago and she was talking about her, what she eats in a day. Um, no surprise to anyone, it's actually not very much. <laughs> so she she starts a day with coffee and a vitamin drip, as you would expect. A vitamin quite, drip? She vitamin drip, drip yeah. Day. An IV vitamin drip. Wow. Um, I mean, I guess if you can. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> and then for lunch, she has bone broth. Mm-hmm. Um, and then vegetables for dinner with perhaps some steamed fish or on their own. And that's her and regular that's diet. Mm-hmm. That's her diet. That's her regular diet. Do you think diet. you can train yourself to only need that amount of food? Like I would just kilo oh, I think after God. a while your after, body gets yeah. used to it and then you just be like... You would yeah. just be yeah. fine. You would just be able to run on that. But it's so antisocial, isn't oh, it? I mean, just so boring. true. Just how can you have any friends or family mm-hmm. when you eat that? Mm. I mean... It is rude. It's rude. I think it's it really is rude. rude, isn't it? It is rude. It is rude. Because she's got kids as well, yes. you know. Well, you can't have a family meal if yeah. you're there basically exactly. in stock for lunch. Bone broth, I'm sorry, that's not a meal. I know. Bone broth is, for me, like um, like a coffee. Uh, yeah, like a drink. It's like a, it's a, a meal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Or like if you are unwell, you may be yeah. throwing something. I always feel like there's a we have a responsibility to talk about, like, in this day and age, a more reasonable measured day on the plate. So even if that is, you know, what it takes to look like Gwyneth, I think that's, you know, fine. Each their own if that's what works for her. But especially as a business owner, someone with a really public platform, I think it's really dangerous. I do. Mm-hmm. I agree. Promoting a diet like that. I do. I really do. And and that's what surprises me because she's a mother and she's a businesswoman. And she's a trailblazer, mm-hmm. you know, um, whatever you think about her. She has led a load of women in, you know, mm-hmm. that follow her as disciples. I think it is really dangerous mm. and it and triggering. I mean, that's, yeah, that's like, it. so that's triggering. It. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I mean, I'm like no, you know, dietitian, doctor, but like she's not having any any carbohydrates, mm. any fats, not much protein. Yeah, and she can't she's actually be healthy. No, it can't no. be very exactly. good for her bones. Can and it? she's fifty. Yeah. Um, and she has kids. Yeah, I just think, I think it's really dangerous. And the she fact that it's trending on TikTok. As well. like, I would be, this yeah. is it. I would be so unenergetic, yeah. I think, but on that diet. she probably has very expensive urine. I expect she takes a huge <laughs> amount of supplements, don't you? Yeah, she's yeah, getting probably. the IV drip. The IV, yes. the IV wow. drip. That's all she needs. Oh. Polly shared a really lovely thing on um, Instagram. I think it was around the Christmas period. I think, And it was a meme basically saying that the, that extra little bit of weight you're carrying, that extra 10% is the fun bit. That mm. is the drinks with friends, it's the yes. late night chips, it's so the takeaway with your boyfriend, whatever it is. And I just I just thought that was like the best it's way the to fun frame. Bit. Yeah. It's the fun bit. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. If like, if you all just want to be 100% lean, then, then like, you know, everybody can make that each their own. 
But for me, that squidgy bit is the... Oh, the totally. Yeah, exactly. that's the fun yeah. part. That's a lovely description of it. it yeah. Okay. My brother once, we were out somewhere and he was eyeing up some girl, forgive me, and I said, what are you up to? And he went, she just looks like she really enjoys her lunch. And I just <laughs> I love thought, that. But what yeah. a lovely thing to say, isn't yeah. it? I take that as a lovely compliment. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I do enjoy yes. my lunch, good diet. Um, is there something that all of you eat every day? Like, is, is, there, is there a routine? Do you have anything that is your... There's part of your kind of food routine or is it a bit more haphazard than that Ooh, mine's very hard. haphazard mm. actually when i'm at work i always i mean this is really boring but i always have a wrap and prep do you yeah oh it's funny you could do better than that i know you should go to the deli because i think because i'm like programmed you know i'm like okay i'll just run out and get it's so good. lunch anytime i go to the deli the queue's like yeah the queue's mad yeah mad so i just run out to prep what do you mm. get from prep the chicken pesto. But can I tell you, that's so good. the chicken pesto has had has been on a journey because it started as a chicken satay, which was banging, but then obviously Pratt. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Pratt what had to that? scrap nuts because of course yeah. they yeah, are, yeah, yeah. have been in serious trouble in that department. So that's fine. And then it became a chicken sriracha wrap. Really delicious. Mm-hmm. And now it has evolved into a chicken pesto. Are, aren't they different though? I, well, They're I very different. I've not seen a, a sriracha, sriracha alongside a pesto. I don't know if when I go in later. If you ever see a sriracha, <laughs> please, yeah, please yeah. Just let me know. Um, but so the pesto was my least favorite of the three. Oh, really? Oh. Interesting. Quite lazy, the isn't it? The pesto, it not much chicken yeah. pesto, not much else. Yeah, it mm. is. But spinach, yeah, dry yeah. spinach. Yeah. 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 Not. I mean, I could, I like. could definitely do better than that. But <laughs> it's just more of a it does the job. Grab convenience done kind of thing. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. Sherry, any go tos? Go to. We actually have the exact same order. So, Joe, there's a deli around the corner. Right, yeah, right. The North Street Deli, which gets quite a lot of air time on shit. That's, and they, <laughs> they've got a big <laughs> board. They do, they do lovely fresh sandwiches and they've got a big board um, with like numbers for different combinations. And we get this, the exact same. The chicken avocado. Number 19. Tomato, yeah. yeah. It's delicious. Again, delicious. a bit of healthy fats, a bit of protein, a <laughs> bit of carbs. Balanced. Oh, exactly. That ciabatta is so good. Oh, it's so good. So good. Mm, delicious. What do I have every day? Oh, probably oats, but that's really boring. Mm. That's because no, it's a good start. To yeah, it's very you, can, good. you can meal prep it, and mm. I know that if I don't eat well for the rest of the day, at least I've had a healthy breakfast. Mm. If I could choose, I would have skinny fries for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. That is like my big, big weakness. What's a skinny fry? Oh, you mean literally skinny like fry? Like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. With a diet coke. Yeah, but I obviously can't have that every day. No, no. On holiday, I do because. You're on holiday. That is the best holiday meal. Yeah, I agree. Like, by Anywhere. Beach, some chips and coke. Oh yes, oh, exactly. yeah. Oh, perfect. And a club sandwich. On yes. Beach. Oh, God, with the mayonnaise falling out. Oh, oh, my God, mayonnaise <laughs> down your hand. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, Joe, anything? What's your, what's your um, eating habits like with your late night know, show? Oh, ridiculous. Absolutely. Because I get home and eat, which yeah, is so bad. You must so be hungry bad. when you oh, get it's home. so bad. It's so bad. But we have, have you heard of Bailey and Sage? We have mm-hmm. a Bailey and Sage. Oh, you do now. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, my God. It's like going into church. Sorry, if, if you're, anyone's religious, worshipping at <laughs> Bailey and Sage. But we all go in, all of us, going, oh, wow. Except I've got to know every single item on the shelf now. Um, and I know where it is and I know what time they sell out. But I love bread. <laughs> I could just live off bread. I, mm. Anyone that denies himself bread. Mm. And Bailey and Sage have these big baskets of different types of bread. So there's um, sultana and there's honey bread mm. and there's seeded bread and there's and all the batons and everything else so i always have bread a new bread loaf of bread from bailey and sage and then i have what's the avocado whipped up guacamole guacamole they're guac mm, they're fresh so guac. Nice. The, one, the one in the pot what is it they put in there is it onion in there there's something really there's crispy. some red onion in there oh it's so red we, onion. there was oh. a bailey and sage next to our old office before we moved and i remember reluctantly talking about that that guac on um because oh, we use it's quite a it was quite a lunch staple for the sherlock's team at one point really in summer mm. The, the memories you see, Charlotte, yeah, yeah, the and you crunch on that guac with this wonderful bread. Yeah. Can, I ask, can I ask a question? Yeah. This, yeah. this is a very localised question, but I felt quite bad for the cheese, what are they called? The from, La Fromagerie. Fromagerie. When Bailey and Sage opened. I, I went straight not in there. The journalist mm. in me went in there, Charlotte, like you, <laughs> and I said, are you concerned yeah. about? And they said, um, no. And I thought, well, you should be because, um, <laughs> you know, Bailey and You're Sage right. is like taken over. Mm. Um, and, and the fromagerie can be, the fromagerie, right, we all love cheese, but that cheese room. I love it though. They're always shouting, shut the door. And I used to go in there and they go, shut the door. <laughs> and you'd go, yeah, but I've got to get in. And it, shut the door. And there was Damien Lewis. Do you remember from Homeland? Course, Damien yeah. Lewis, who I so absolutely adored. Mm. I saw him going in there once um, 
And I just thought, I've got to ask him to come on my show. And I followed him in and everyone shouted. He was in the cheese room and they went, shut the door. And I was shut in the cheese room with David Lewis. And I well, there said, are worse people to be stuck in the cheese room. I know, but he's, mm. he, like, he was obviously shopping for Helen at the time. Mm. And, and um, I said, um, hello, you don't know me, but I have a radio show. I mean, this is so embarrassing. I said, <laughs> I don't suppose uh, you'd think of um, coming on the show. And he went... He looked down at me and he went, no. Oh, oh. And I was shut in the cheese room, <laughs> oh my freezing gosh. with Damien. Oh, how awkward. And, I, and I, I think it was because it was his privacy yeah. and mm. he was cheese shopping mm. and it was like so compromising. It's <laughs> so good for you for just asking. I know, yeah. but you yeah. have to. Yeah. You yeah. must do that. Um, just... I'm not very good at that. Georgie's very good at that. Oh, Georgie would yeah, be I'm, brilliant. I actually get quite And okay. they'd all say yes to Georgie, yeah. unlike me. She's <laughs> tall and leggy. And, but he just went, no. And... Um, and so, yes, that was a lingering uh, memory of, of So has it Marjorie. traumatised you for life? Totally, totally traumatised me. But, uh, but it is, that from Marjorie, you know, it doesn't have what Bailey and Sage has. And you're right to be concerned. Um, they're a much smaller <laughs> enterprise. But I, wa- I just wonder if that, you know, that will still attract locals and Bailey and Sage is a bit more flashy and showy. It is and flashy and, and locals and you can go and sit in the fromagerie exactly. and have uh, cheese, their cheese and ham sandwiches, toasties. Can I tell you, we, yeah, oh, we really? actually interviewed on Gold, um, the founder of La Fromagerie oh. and she, I mean, it was just one of my, one of my favourite interviews we've ever done. It what was, a, it was an amazing, mm. amazing woman. Anyway, that's a real tangent but I would much rather talk about cheese than bone broth. Let's answer some questions. Some questions have come in. What is your typical working from home morning routine? Joe, do you have work to do outside of your radio station? Like, yes. do you prep when you're at home yes so what does that look like for you? so um i i'm sent my running order and uh, i've got to the stage now and i'm really lucky where i can just say no i don't want to do that i don't want to do that i don't want to do that i always say i'm fed up with interviewing celebrities um but people i really want to interview are the non-celebrities with really good stories and so i will often going back to approaching people in the street there are people i meet and i just think i really want you on my show so i will get their contact numbers send them to my producer send as much background as I can and my producer's brilliant we've worked together for so long comes back and says okay yes I booked them um are these okay we go through the questions then we do a thing every night called chewing the fat where we sit with three other journalists and talk about topics and I usually choose those topics that I want um the journal and I do that at home in the morning it's a bit like I'm this. very <laughs> like this very like this not as rela- not as much fun I hasten to add <laughs> um but um yeah quite similar um, and I do that from home, you know, just wandering around in my dressing gown or whatever. And I, li- I actually like that. Mm. I like, um, because also our um, newsroom is like all hot desking. No one has their own desk. Mm. So you turn up and someone's sitting where you want to sit. So I quite like, you know, having the luxury of working from home. Nice. Plus mm. I'm only eight minutes away. I can walk in very quickly. Mm. Any rituals you have when you're working from home that you must um, do? I work from a laptop, which I put absolutely ed- anywhere, um, literally anywhere. Um, no, I don't, I don't turn the phone off. It's all incredibly relaxed because I was never trained really to work in an office. I have no, uh, office etiquette mm. at all at home. It's You're not replicating. Not, not at all. Home. It's very messy. Very messy. <laughs> um, Emma, what does a working from home morning look like for you? Um, uh, well, they're usually my exercise mornings if I can drag myself up. So I'll do like maybe 45 minutes exercise, get the kids to school, walk the dog come back and then I'm kind of ready to go but yeah I'm quite relaxed at home like I'll either be at the kitchen table or up in the office yeah quite relaxed mm. do yeah. you put on makeup and like get yourself dressed no. or is it your day to leave no it to yeah. I like either put on something super comfy like big baggy sweatshirt and and that's it yeah. scrape my hair back maybe just on a cap like yeah. I'm very very low key at home that's the I'm best like, part of yeah. home, I think Sherry Definitely. what's the morning like for you pretty similar yeah. hair scrape back I always do a hair mask on a Wednesday oh nice put it in some um, Philip Kingsley elasticizer does wonders oh, mm-hmm. and people then, love that product mm, mm. I usually go to the gym with my dad on a Wednesday which is like a oh, nice little so highlight nice. Nice. yeah which is really nice and then we get back and then have a breakfast and and then and then start I mean yeah. what, how much time do you really have in the morning before mm. you start working and then my new thing is putting a little bit of cucumber in my water which oh. is just like the, the smallest thing but I just feel slightly like elevated yeah. I think being able to do those really civilised things when you're at home really just yeah. light, light a, a candle or something. exactly yeah, yeah exactly um, someone has asked what is the best career advice you've ever received Jo I truly believe that um, gosh it's such a cliche 
you get back what you put in. Uh, you know, the harder you work, it's so cliched, but the harder you work, you know, going back to Monday blues and everything, when you think, oh God, I can't be bothered. I'm just, <laughs> like, just going to sit and watch you know, White Lotus. Um, but if you just start, especially if you're freelance, to make those um, approaches, then you will get back. Even if it's a rejection, it might be a connection so you can work on something else. Um, and I've I've learned that, that, you know, sometimes you just think I'm just getting rejection, rejection, or I'm not getting where I want to be and I'm hitting a brick wall. But you won't, as long as you're working at it, mm. you are taking tiny steps forward. And also, I do love the fact now that, um, especially for women, our lives are chapters. I've really noticed that um, my life has just been a series of chapters. It's not linear. I think men often have to be linear and women don't, you know, we like we have periods and we have menopause and it's all chapters mm -hmm. and our careers can be really healthy chapters. And, you know, when to, like, you know, Charlotte, I'm thinking, when do I move away from the BBC? <laughs> when do I take that leap in faith? And I will do it. So when it's right, you know, and it will be exciting because I'll think, good, now I'm going to go on to a new, and I'm not going to fear it. And I think you shouldn't, fear change you should just you should embrace it and think this is the next chapter and it's going to be exciting I think we get so scared of change mm -hmm. but that was a very long answer no no no, no that's great advice. Yeah, yeah, really, really good, good advice. advice but I think it's really exciting I think it's so exciting you know ambition I talk about that a lot with my friends who've gone on maternity leave or are kind of having babies around now about how you know there are times in your life where work will be a priority mm. times in life where it won't but it's the chapters thing that you said I mean Emma you mm. you did that you're in an hour yeah. new chapter almost coming back aren't yeah you? like 100% like I before I started here I was freelance for gosh like six years so as you were saying earlier like office etiquette like I hadn't been in office for you know I didn't know all the systems yeah. and everything yeah. so um yeah no this is definitely a, a different chapter for me after having kids and yeah so I feel like I've done little little stints at different things. Yeah. What's and it the, keeps it interesting. Of course it, it does. Yeah. What's the best career advice you've ever had? I would say try and just be a yes person, mm. like say yes to opportunities that come your way. And maybe it's a just being that little bit braver, even if something scares you, mm. just kind of embrace it and, and try and go with it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good, good advice. Definitely. Sherry? Oh, it's quite hard. Mm. I don't think there's someone who has given me career advice specifically. I don't know who has said this. It might have been Chris Jenner. Not that she's the, <laughs> the career queen, but she kind of is really. Yes. She said, um, just be nice to every single person who you meet and like don't burn bridges. If you leave somewhere, leave on a good note, make a good impression. So you don't know like who you're going to meet further down the line in like 10 years. Perhaps there was a runner on a TV show. Not this is so going to happen to me. But perhaps there's a runner who you're rude to and then they're your producer in like so 10 true. years. Mm, yeah. Always be lovely. I love it's Chris Jenner because apparently <laughs> um, everyone says of Kim, she is just so lovely. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah they do. She's yeah. so nice, really so thank you. Things. And I just think that's probably the way she's been called. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, it costs nothing, like manners. No. It's, it's I easy. interviewed Jen Atkin, um, who's a hairdresser for one of the Kardashians hairdressers. And she said her best career advice also came from Chris Jenner, oh. which was if somebody says no, ask someone else. Which I just thought, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Good advice. <laughs> Don't really good. No um, can I give you mine? I'm going to just, I'm yeah, gonna, go I've got two pieces of advice, both from my dad, who is um, something of an oracle um, for me. So I have spoke, I have talked about the first one on the podcast many times, um, but this is his piece of advice. He wants to write a book called this. Um, called the, the line is read it three ways. So when you receive an email, when you receive a message and we all do this. So we, you know, we pick it up mm. and say, oh, so-and-so said, ah, and he said, stop. Read it in this tone of voice. Oh and read my it God. That is such that's good, good advice. advice, isn't yeah. it? Read it three ways. The reason he hasn't written the book is because that is as far as that concept goes. <laughs> like there's no more. It would be a one page book, but that is it. So read it three ways. And the second is only do what only you can do, which I think is such good advice. Only do what only you can do in a workplace. So don't mm. worry about all the other things that are not your remit, not your skill set. Only do what only you can do. And that's where you'll find your real value, I think. And I think I'd love to yeah, meet your really dad. He's very wise. Is he a businessman? He, he is a businessman, yes. Yeah, he is. That thing about the email though, because I'm so reactionary. Mm. I'll read the top line and go, ah! Exactly. You know, and you just, and you don't read the sense of it yeah. at all. It's yeah. so clear. I know, it's really good advice. There was an interview with career advice in last week's show. So do check it out. And one of her pieces of advice, which I loved, was 
take 72 hours to respond to anything oh, oh wow so, yeah wow. because you do you just fire something back or you anything that's sorry not anything anything no, don't, no, please it's... don't to our team don't start taking 72 hours to respond <laughs> to <laughs> but anything that's agitated you or provoked you mm. that's so, because it means you have control you have full control exactly. because they're waiting well, for well then you. your emotions also yes. change yeah. don't they the yeah. things that yeah. rile you up totally yeah and also depending it. on your mood like how, when you're reading it like you could read it when you're like really totally. stressed out and then you're like oh I can't believe they're saying that but then actually you know if yeah. you read it later and you're like yeah. oh all they're saying is yeah. you know 72 and you do just kind of get over things don't you yes, yeah. of course you yeah. do finally let's talk fashion very quickly somebody said what's on your spring wish list Joe, you have to tell us where this gorgeous dress is from it's very spring like this is spring. Erdem oh, oh, and and I um, I feel very <laughs> Amish or Little House on the Prairie no it's perfect it's but perfect. I and I also think I'm just sinking to the sofa I'll just be like a floating <laughs> head um, but I love it because it's got pockets and um, but what I love this season um, is trouser suits because they are literally so I've got a Hobbs trouser suit and um, a Theory trouser suit both different price ranges one in fuchsia pink one in navy blue very similar mm -hmm. to what you're wearing and um, and they're just I love them they're very yeah. easy to wear they're so easy yeah. and at the age I've got to I think I've seen the trouser suit come back three <laughs> times along with the espadrille um, <laughs> but I think that's for me going to be my spring must have is the trouser suit mm. yes. yeah I agree with that that's a good one. Sherry, what's on your wish list? Oh, I'm thinking a good jacket. Maybe like a bomber. The Zara mm. green one is mm. really nice. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I wear that, the Zara green one. Oh, I actually saw it in the Battersea Power Station oh, really? store the other day. So I think they still have it. But yeah, I think a good some outerwear mm. I could make the most out of. You were wearing a good I was just thinking, I saw you in a good bomber. When was it? It was like an hour ago. Mine's Frankish. Oh, it's that one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really very old, but I really live nice. in it and it's, it's a really super good comfy. Yeah. Yeah. Emma, spring must have. Spring um, wish list. I, well, quite similar to, I'm going to get some more sil like you silky suits. Mm. I just like, these mm. trousers are just like the dream. Yeah, where's I this just, one? This is mm. nice. These Air are Wand. Max Mara. Really oh, nice. wow. Um, but I just love them. They're just like wearing pajamas. Yeah, so very comfy. What's your Charlotte? Anything on your list i feel like it's like almost so many things that there's nothing do you know what i mean mm. i, I like just so love these things, me and m that you're thanks, wearing yeah. I love these are, these. do you know what i've got a few of these me and m these are car they're kind of cargo but i've got a few of the cargo trousers that are everywhere with the big pockets mm -hmm. on them and i just they're just not me like i just don't feel i don't know they're just a little too boyish really. yeah mm -hmm. a little too androgynous so um i really love these which are kind of you can't tell because i'm sitting down but have really lovely pleats so they sit in like a lovely big wide leg um and i'm wearing trainers now but actually it's because I've got to wear heels later, so I thought it worked quite well. And this is also part of a suit. This blazer, this is also a me and M suit, and there's some very wide leg trousers that go with that. You do well, wear. So. She wears fantastic blazers. Thank you. I, do mm. that. I have to laugh when you first came on my show, and that was probably about three years ago. Do you remember it was the time of the tabard? I do remember. I knew that's what you were going to say. Yes, I and and um, yes. everyone was like coming out of the newsroom. Where? What's that? And. Literally a week later, everyone is wearing tabards. Really? It was my navy suit by Chloe one, which yes. very kindly I still got asked about a lot. But it was it was nearly four years ago actually. That was it so four it was years? Quite, yeah, ago. nearly. Yeah, you still wear it? Yeah, it's quality. Quality will out. You see, exactly. Mm. It was. I was always. I was thrilled with that one. Mm. Um. All right. I think that's it, Joe. Thank you so much. I've loved us. it. Loved having you today. Um. Thank you, Emma and Sherry as well. If you have any feedback at all, please do email podcast at shellax.com. We love hearing from you. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and tell your friends. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.